guys, Pwn here, and today I want to talk about a couple of things. Over the weekend, I had my house assault. There ended up being 12 of us, uh, so we had 6v6, and we ran uh, three or four game types. It was just a lot of fun on Sunday. Uh, and there were a couple products that I wanted to test out during this house assault. The first product was, of course, the Nerf Cam. I wanted to get some footage of some actual war highlights. I'll have that coming up after I talk about things for a little bit. I also wanted to talk about a third party little valentine that produces Nerf Elite darts. Now in the event, I didn't want there to be any confusion about whose darts were whose when people left, so I just said, don't bring any of your own darts, I will provide the darts. A few of these actually came with the holster that I reviewed a while back, and I thought they were decent looking, uh, so I picked them up. Uh, they're on Amazon Prime. Uh, I purchased them for $11.99 for $200, which I thought was a pretty good deal, especially on Prime, free two-day shipping. And they're really the cheapest and fastest darts that I've ever seen. I see actually right now they're selling for $12.99, but still a great price for 200 darts. I ended up buying 1000 for this event, and then I asked everyone what they thought about them. And just from people's reactions, they varied from jamming a little bit more to jamming a little bit less than regular Nerf darts. I would say they're pretty comparable to normal Nerf darts. They are a little bit heavier, and the tips are a little bit harder, so I would definitely suggest wearing eye protection when using these. I was using a modified Strife running Rhino Motors, and the only problem that I had was that sometimes my blaster would rip the heads off causing a jam. It would spit out the head and then leave the foam body in the magazine so I had to quickly pull out the magazine and then drop the foam body. After I counted everything up at the end I, I found there were only 28 out of a thousand that the heads were ripped off of. I don't think this is a design deficiency. I think this is probably just manufacturing error. The ones where the heads were ripped off were just friction fit in, they weren't glued like a majority of, of the darts, and 2.8% of the darts being defective, that's pretty decent, especially considering the price. I guess my point is, after 12 people running through these darts multiple times over three hours, I was actually very happy with how they performed. And I would definitely recommend these to any group that's looking for a very large volume of darts for a really good price. Obviously these are not Koosh darts, so they're not going to fly as straight as Koosh darts, but if you buy a ton and you provide everyone with the same ammunition, I think it's going to create fair gameplay anyway. Alright, the next thing I want to talk about is the Nerf Cam. I was kind of impressed with the Nerf Cam before. After going through the footage, I'm actually even more impressed with how the Nerf Cam performs. Over three and a half hours, uh, the batteries lasted the whole time. I did switch it on and off in between rounds. Uh, so even that small amount of time, three hours, I think is pretty darn good for a camera that, if we wanted to say the blaster was worth about $30, then this camera costs $40. Considering the quality of footage you can get and the fact that it's just, it's all self-contained, throw it on the rail of any blaster, this thing is actually pretty awesome. I'll let you judge for yourself based on this footage. All right, I'll go into the footage a little bit, uh, just so you're not totally lost. We did three game types. The first game type was just team deathmatch, one hit kill. In the same vein, we did one hit, one kill with three deaths. So you'd have to go respawn and come back, and you could do that two more times after you died the first time. Then we had a game type with zombies, where a majority of the players started within the house. Three zombies started outside. They had an unknown amount of health. So the players would just have to fire at them until they went down, and then they would reset, sort of like COD. Um, you'd have rounds, uh, and then the zombies would go reset. Their health would increase, but it would still be unknown to the players. It was definitely stressful as you fired, and you weren't sure which one was going to take them down. You're backing up, and it, was, it had a definite zombie feel. We did sort of a hostage game where we actually closed doors, and one team had the house, and the other team started outside, and the assault team got to use my riot shield as they breached the house. And then once they reached the final room, an executioner with the hostage could execute the hostage after counting to 15 seconds. So as soon as they made contact with the assault team, the people defending would try to hold them off, and then the hostage would be executed after X amount of time. Alright, well as Kriparian might say, enjoy the clips, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Thank <laughs> you.